quite often when kids get sick, their parents will effectively go and demand antibiotics from uh, um, the physicians, from the pediatricians, uh, even though there's a lot of evidence to suggest that when these kids are getting sick, what they really have are viral infections. And, you know, antibiotics really are antibacterials in the, um, you know, and they, they do nothing against viruses. And so now you've got this issue where kids are sick due to a viral infection, uh, but because of a misperception, they've been given lots of antibacterials, which could be causing lots of collateral damage. So they're doing nothing good for the infection, but they've been lots of reasons for all of the other bugs that they hit to get uh, resistant to their antibiotic. So this awesome set of collaborations with uh, Carrie Ann Burnham. She's the director of the clinical micro lab here at Barnes. And we've got this awesome suite of collaborations where uh, effectively, you know, if Carrie Ann comes across a really hardcore, you know, drug resistant pathogen, uh, uh, which uh, with their, you know, modern molecular methods, uh, they can't elucidate what the resistance mechanism is, right? So basically, the reason they care about this is because this thing came, you know, made some patient very sick here. And that's when we come on board, Carrie Ann then shares that information and then eventually the isolates with our lab. And then we throw the effectively like the omics kitchen sink at it, right? So we take genomics and transcriptomics and lipidomics, it doesn't matter. This idea of measuring as many uh, uh, physiological and metabolic properties in these drug resistant organisms as possible compared to their susceptible counterparts uh, to try to in real time figure out, you know, not theoretically what resistance exists in the soil, but what resistance is in this emerging pathogen. Uh, and uh, that's, that's been a super exciting area for the lab because uh, it's actually moved very, very rapidly. And it's also easy to get graduate students and postdocs involved, right? To, uh, because basic science is fantastic, don't, don't get me wrong. This is what, that's the engine of our lab. But to have something that can have impact that quickly, right? So if they were able to figure out what that resistance mechanism was, within a short period of time, Carrie Ann's lab could develop a molecular diagnostic and save the next life. And that it had that kind of impact over the course of a PhD, I, I wish I was so lucky when I did my PhD. It's crazy what microbes can do. There's just a sort of discovery aspect of wanting to study, um, you know, how do microbes respond to the challenges that we throw at them, right? And so antibiotics thrown in a microbe is a challenge and it's remarkable how quickly they adapt and evolve. And so there's just a basic science component of wanting to understand how that occurs. Um, but then the parallel motivation and perhaps the greater motivation for this specific area is, uh, you know, it's, I really think it's, it's terribly un underappreciated how close we might be to this precipice of running out of chemotherapeutics um, that was so dependent on antibiotics, right? And it's kind of a weird thing, but, you know, if we had access to a time machine and you were able to take one thing back with you, right, to say the 1800s, the thing you should take with you is antibiotics, right? Because that will kill you otherwise, right? Just think of the number of people who just dropped dead uh, because they got some, you know, now easily treatable infection. We're entering an era where that's no longer gonna be true. And we have to do something about that. <laughs>